Okay, practice 9.6. So um, the first set of questions deter says determine which of the two acute angles has the given trigonometric ratio. So it's going to be either angle Q or angle R. There's my two acute angles, right? So this first one says the sine of the angle is 8 over 17. Okay, so I'm thinking Sokotoa, right? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So this would be my opposite. This would be my hypotenuse. Well, the hypotenuse is always going to be the 17. Um, but the opposite and adjacent depends on where you are, right? So I have to think, well, if I was over here, 15 would be the opposite leg. So that's not going to work because um, I need 8 over 17. But if I'm over here at the R, if I'm down here, then this would be the opposite and this would be the adjacent leg. So opposite over hypotenuse that's going to work. That would be 8 over 17. So that means I'd be at angle R. Okay. Let's get a, let's just, I'll just get the other perspective. If I'm in, if I'm looking at the triangle from here, well then the 15 would be the opposite leg. And then this would be the adjacent. Now I'm set up no matter what they ask me. Um, okay. So next one, cosine. So I'm re remembering cosine. That's the ka part of Sokotoa. So I've got adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so I'm looking for adjacent over hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is always 17, but I want to think what's going to be adjacent, uh, the adjacent leg. When is the adjacent leg going to be 15? So if I'm over here, then the adjacent leg is the 15. That's the, uh, the leg that's next to me, right? The hypotenuse is adjacent, but it's not a leg. So yeah, this would be angle R again. Okay, and last is uh, tangent. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay, so I'm thinking where is the opposite 15? Well, the 15 would be opposite um, for this blue guy over here, right? That's the opposite leg, and then the adjacent would be 8. So that's going to work out from angle Q. Okay, and that's the first set. All right. So um, this next group of problems, you're going to need a scientific calculator. So you need those sine, tangent, and cosine uh, uh, keys. And then you know you've got a scientific calculator. This also says we're going to answer to the nearest tenth of a degree. So we're using degree mode then. So your calculator needs to be in degree mode. So for, for my calculator, I'm going to hit mode here. And then I can see, oh, this is already in degrees. So I'm good to go. And I'm going to hit second mode to quit to go back to home screen or you can just turn it off and on again okay so i'm not just going to put in sine of 0.64 that's not what this is asking so this says um, that angle b is an acute angle use a calculator to approximate the measure of angle b to the nearest tenth of a, a degree okay so this time my unknown is is uh, the contents of the um the trig function in all of these all right. So um, what I can do to isolate the B is I can use the inverse sign. OK, so the inverse sign is going to switch the position of those two things, which would be great because then the B would be isolated. OK, and the way I write the inverse sign without writing the inverse of sign out is like that. Um, OK, and then. Yeah, those two things just switch positions when I do the inverse sign. So this would be 0.64, and this would be B. And now I have something that I can plug into my calculator. Okay, And now I'm going to get a long decimal out. I'm going to take the inverse sign. Oh, by the way, notice the negative one is there, right? Not over here. It's different if you raise the contents of the trig function in the negative first. Um, this just means inverse sign. Okay. Sometimes you might see that written as arc sign. That's the same thing. All right. So the way I'm going to do that, if you have a sine key, then you uh, then you should have a an inverse sine key as well. It's usually just written right above. It's a little hard to see here, but right above the sine key, it says sine to the negative first, the inverse sine. So what I'm going to do to access that, I'll hit the second button up here, second, then sine, and then I'll put in the 0.64. Hit enter, and I'm going to the nearest tenth, so I'm going to call that 30, about 39.8 degrees. And it's really important that I put the degree symbol in my answer, because if I don't, then this would be radian measure, which is not what we're doing. Okay, 
So these are pretty quick to do once you get the hang of it. So you're going to use the inverse of the trig functions on all of these. So I'm going to say the inverse of cosine is going to equal inverse cosine of 0.12 is going to equal b. And then I'll put that in my calculator. Um, so let's see. So you do the same, same kind of thing here. You just press second and then cosine this time. And then the decimal. And I've got 83.1 roughly. 83.1 degrees. Okay, again, I'm going to use inverse tangent here. So these all have inverse functions. They all work in the same fashion. tangent then of 2.18 and I've got 65.4 degrees. Sometimes on these problems I like to just set everything up first and then I do all the calculator stuff at the end so that's what I'm going to do here. So all of these I'm going to reverse the positions of those two parts by using the inverse trig functions. really just, well, you have to know how to set up the inverse trig function, but these are very easy problems um, once you know what to do. A um, big part of it's just knowing how to operate your calculator. Okay, and I can plug all three of those in pretty quickly. So let's see, inverse sine, 0.41. Inverse cosine of 0 0.05 and inverse tangent of 5.18. Okay, so I got 24.2 degrees. Eighty-seven point one degrees. And notice these are all um, acute angles. Um, so I fulfilled, yeah. Angle B is going to be an acute angle. Um, oh, I guess, yeah, these are angle B and these are H, but same direction. So 79.1 degrees is the last one. Yeah, these all came out acute. Okay, and now on to the last two problems. Last but not least, solve the triangle. You have to know what that means. That means find all of the missing sides and all of the missing angles. So let's uh, survey this a little bit. Um, so I can find, I've got two of the angles already, right? So I can find this third one pretty quickly. So what I can do, I can say all three of the angles add up to 180, and that's fine. But if this is 90 degrees, the other 90 degrees is going to come from the two acute angles. So the two acute angles in a right triangle are always going to add up to 90 degrees. So just as a little shortcut, in, instead of saying all of them add up to 180. I'm just going to say, sorry, it's talking and writing at the same time. I'm going to say the two acute angles add up to 90 degrees. So let's see, when I subtract 37 from both sides, um, I'm going to get um, 53 degrees. Okay, so hey, I'm done for the angles, right? But I'm still missing two of the sides. Um, so I'm thinking, how can I get those two sides? I can't use Pythagorean theorem yet because I only have one of the three sides of this triangle. But let's say we're over here. Well, hey, I could use Sokotoa, right? So this would be from here. I mean, I could have done this from angle P, but I just chose to do it from there. So this would be the adjacent side, and this would be the hypotenuse. So I can use Sokotoa, right? And so I'd want to use the cosine part because that's the only part that uses adjacent and hypotenuse. So the cosine of 37 degrees, that's where I'm at, right, is, um, I'll call this x for now, I don't know what, what it is yet, over 22. Now I can solve for x though, right? Okay, um, so I'm going to use the incredible switch here. No, I'm not. That's not going to do me any good because I'd still have the variable on top. So instead... Take that back. I'm going to multiply by 22 to isolate the x. If 
I needed the exact answer, then that's what it, that's the best I can do. But this says to the nearest tenth. Um, so I assume they mean um, yeah. I'm gonna go to the nearest tenth here. So let's see. Um, Twenty-two times the cosine of thirty-seven degrees is seventeen point six. And I, I want to remember what side that was. That was this side. I like to just put it in the picture. Okay. And uh, I'm getting there. Okay. Um, so, um, and I like to always kind of kind of spot check my answers for the sides. I was expecting it to come out less than 22, and it did, right? Because 22 is the hypotenuse. And then we can either use Sokotoa again to get this final side, or you could actually use Pythagorean theorem. It's just, if you did do Pythagorean theorem, it's better to use as much of this decimal as possible. I rounded it to 17.6 for my answer, but if I was doing Pythagorean theorem, I really want to use, the more I use, the better there, okay? To get me closer to the real answer. So I'm just going to use Sokotoa again. So from here, this would be opposite. So, it, uh, you know, I was calling this part X. So let's call this side Y over here. So then I'd use the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that would be sine. So I can say sine of... 37 degrees is opposite, which I called y here, over hypotenuse, which is 22. What am I doing here? Okay, I'm going to multiply both sides by 22. I don't have much space here. And then I'll use my calculator. And that's about 13.2. And that seems to fit in with the picture as well. So that was this side. Okay. And I just kind of like to put it in the picture because then I can see, okay, got all the angles, got all the sides, I'm done. I have solved that triangle. All right, so let's try it again. So first thing I would do is look at the three angles. I'm just going to do this part in my head. So this is 90 degrees. I know those two add up to 90 degrees. So I'm thinking um, 90 minus 51 that's going to give me 39 degrees. So this is going to be 39 degrees. Okay. And you could write out the little thing, but I'm just trying to make this a little neater. Okay, and then I like to usually put myself at, for the, I'm going to do Sokotoa to get these two other sides, and I usually like to put myself at the acute angle that was given to me at the beginning. I could do from the 39 degrees, but you know, say I made a, um, a little mistake with the 39 degrees. Um, that would throw off my other angles. So I know the 51 is definitely right. Um, so it's just a little safeguard. Okay, so let's see. This would be the adjacent. This would be the hypotenuse. I'm just going to call those x and y just so I can make equations out of them. And then um, the 14 would be the opposite. Okay, so if I'm going for um, the side I've labeled x here, I'd probably want to use opposite and adjacent. So that would mean tangent. Tangent of 51 degrees is going to equal 14 over x. Opposite over adjacent. Okay. I'm going to set up the equation for y at the same time. So for, for y, I'd use opposite and hypotenuse. So that would be sine. So sine of 51 degrees is going to be 14 over y. Okay, on both of these, I'm going to want to use the incredible switch to switch the positions of those things because that will isolate the x over here. And then the same thing here, switch those two. Okay, and now I've got what I need. Or the calculator. So I'm, this is going to be 14 divided by the tangent of 51 degrees. And this would be 14 divided by the sine of 51 degrees. Okay, so I've got 11.3 roughly over here and 18.0. Um, I'm going to the nearest tenth. Okay, so those were the other two sides. And I'm thinking, I do like to think, does that make sense here? This was, if this was about 11.3 and this was about 18.0, I'm expecting the hypotenuse to be the largest side. It's looking good. 
right? So I'm feeling good about that. So I've solved that. So my actual answers are the measure of this angle and then the measure of the two missing sides, and then I have everything. Okay, and that's it.